Hey everybody, it's William Green, and these are My Green Pets, hosted by the wonderful people at Fantasy Orchids in Louisville, Colorado. And we are going to go through my collection today and look and see what is going on, so stay tuned. Let's start out with my big multifloral slipper orchid. So this one is a Michael Kopowitz, and um, it is looking like this growth is nearing completion and hopefully that means that in the next few months we might see something poking out of the top here. Now this is a PAF Prime Child and Prime Child has actually got what looks like a sheath. You can see the color on the leaf is a little different there and that usually indicates that there's a sheath. And when I squeeze underneath down here it does feel a little bit fat but I don't know. Um, it's had that sheath on it for several months, so it's possible it's just for show and that it's not actually going to bloom. Didn't bloom last year either. Um, it does have a new growth down here in the bottom, which is great. And it has another one around the other side too. I don't know if you can see it. But there's another one pushing out down there. Yeah, I think you can I'll see it a little bit. So that's good news. Now these are my two smaller paths. Uh, this is a path Velosum, and it definitely is showing signs of blooming. It, the base is very fat here, and uh, it just put out this leaf in the past couple months. So I'm hoping this fall we will see something coming out of there. It would be a first bloom seedling if it does bloom. And then right next to it is my little magic lantern. You can see the bottom leaves don't look that great, and the reason is because uh, about a month or so ago, I just kind of noticed it wasn't looking very good, and then when I unpotted it, I saw that it had no roots. The roots had all rotted off. So that's not good. So it is in a new mix of uh, bark and got a little bit of sphagnum on top, and we're going to see if it has enough life in it to push out some new roots and hopefully survive. All right, my little Vanda Falcata, little Japanese wind orchid is looking okay it's got lots of new roots on it and uh, it's putting out new growth and it bloomed this year in June but it does have some little new growths poking out too so I'm not sure if those are just maybe gonna bloom next year or if they're just uh, gonna push out in the next couple of months I don't know usually this thing blooms in the, blooms in the summer though so but it is nice, isn't it? It's been getting a lot of light here in the Fantasy Orchids greenhouse, so you can see that the leaves are kind of red and speckly. I'd like to thank everybody who um, tuned in to the uh, live chat with me and Rachel from Gardening at Dewensa last week. If you missed it, I'm going to link above to it so that you can check that out. It was a real fun conversation, and uh, this was the plant we talked about. We actually talked about Bobophila medusae, and uh, Rachel showed me hers, and I showed her mine, and uh, uh, we mentioned how this plant uh, can actually take quite a bit of light. You can see there's almost like a bronzish tint to the leaves and that's because it's getting top top light and that's causing it to be able to grow more growths and also hopefully that means that the spikes are going to grow out nice and big and look good in the next couple months. This plant was divided several months ago but it has survived and it looks like it's going to be doing okay. Putting out a new leaf there Another bulbo that I have that has been repotted is this um, lovely Elizabeth. And this is similar to the Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. The difference is that um, it has uh, one additional cross uh, crossed into it so that it, uh, the flowers aren't quite as long. But they're still very pretty and hopefully uh, we'll see some blooms on this bulbo this year as well. Another little bubble film that I have is this one. This is Antoniferum, and it's a small one. And it's nice because it blooms whenever it feels like it. It doesn't really have a season for blooming. It's got a new uh, growth coming up right there. And then in the back, it's got a little spike pushing up. So we'll see this guy in bloom in, I guess, about a month or so. 
And then over here is my last bulbo, my last pair of bulbos, and this is Hal, the famous bulbo echinolabium. And Hal is just completing his first, uh, his newest spike. He put out a spike about as, basically as soon as we moved here to Colorado. And you can see here that the first flower on that spike is starting to push out. So usually these take about two weeks from the first time they push out to opening up. So in about two weeks, hopefully we'll have some pictures of Hal. And if you want to follow uh, My Green Pets more frequently, I update my Instagram page, uh, I'm My Green Pets on Instagram, and I update my stories uh, with uh, My Green Pets almost every day, at least, two, at least three or four times a week. This is another bobo. This is Ant uh, Rufinum, and uh, it's just a little piece of one that I kept and uh, it's got out a new bulb here and hopefully I don't like that black dot on there oh good it came off and uh, hopefully we might see a bloom push out of that later this season oh what are these beautiful leaves belong to it is none other than the wonderful spectacular Phalaenopsis shilleriana beautiful little red root tips pushing out and uh, this plant seems to be doing all right. It's got um, an older leaf that seems to be fading. And I hate that, I wish it would hold on to it. But it has two new leaves it's put out this year. And hopefully we will see a nice flower spike pushing out on that in the next few months. Usually it doesn't start pushing out its spike until winter. And then right behind him over here I have my two catacetum types. And you can see that they are not looking so hot. I think that they have some kind of might damage something is eating on them does not look good but I've been spraying them with alcohol and wiping the leaves off so um, I don't know if that's helping or not but uh, of course we are approaching the end of the growing season for these plants too so they do naturally lose their leaves in the fall however um, I still don't think that they are looking as great as they could. But anyway, hopefully we might see some flowers on this new bulb and this new bulb on the Mormodia Jumbo World. And then the um, Psychnotis Wine Delight actually does have a spike on it right now. And it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of flowers in the spike, but you know what, we'll take what we can get. All right, and last but not least are my little Cattleya babies. These are Cattleya Rex. These are all from the same flask that I got four years ago. And when I got them, most of them were only about this size here. But now they've all kind of grown at different rates. Some of them have been very good growers. Um, this one has been mounted on this piece of hickory bark for the past four years. It's grown very well. You can see lots of roots pushing out there, always a good sign. Love to see that root action. And here's a couple of smaller ones that have been um, mounted on hickory bark and they've been on there for the same amount of time, about four years, but they're just smaller plants, they just haven't grown as quickly. But you can see lots of great gr uh, root growth down here, here as well. So they're definitely going to be doing okay, it's just a question of growing a little faster. I think once they once they start to really get established and start going, every bulb is going to be bigger and bigger. Uh, let's see, yeah, they're all in kind of various stages of growth. Many of them put out new leaves uh, earlier this year, but some of them are still slacking. And some of them actually, this one put out a new leaf a few months ago, and now it's got another one forming down there. A little bud down there going to push out and be a new leaf. And then some of the larger ones, like this is the largest one right here, and it's doing great. And it put out a sheath this year, actually. And uh, we were really hoping that we would see a flower, but we didn't end up seeing a flower on it. But you know what? I think next year we might get lucky. We might get to see something next year. Next summer, summertime is when it blooms. But look, it's got lots of roots pushing out. Love the side of that those new roots. Look over here. It's a root party. Roots everywhere. So that is good news. That's good to see. And that means if we have a good strong group of roots then next year the growth will be bigger 
and hopefully we will have some flowers. All right, well, one of the great things about keeping my orchids here at Fantasy Orchids is that I'm not the only person who keeps their plants here. And so it's really nice to be able to look around, meet other orchid growers who are keeping their plants here, and just, you know, talk about, talk about what we have and exchange information. And also it's fun just to look around and see what there is to see. So let's go around and see what kind of other interesting plants we have living here. So right next door to my little grow space, uh, this uh, grower has got this uh, Millennium Magic Witchcraft. And it is in bud here getting ready to pop out some blooms. And um, I saw this for the first time a couple weeks ago, and it turns out that the flowers aren't, people say that they're almost black. Well, you can see they are kind of a maroon color. They are very dark, though, and I guess in the right light they can look black. But anyway, that'll be exciting to see bloom. Look at this beauty. This is a Path Gloria Noggle. It's a cross of Ralph Sheldonum and Migrantham, and it is just beautiful. You don't really see them too often. I've heard that they're really kind of challenging to get to bloom, but if you look at the leaves down here, you can see what nice modeling they are, how pretty those are. Those are great. And then right next to it, we have this one, and this one is a little bit of a freak of nature. It looks like the pouch has split, and this is a path, what is it, Alexa Noel, and uh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> the lip is not exactly the way it's supposed to look, but interesting nonetheless. Now here's a little lovely little slipper orchid. This is path Mamie Wilson, and Mamie Wilson is a cross of Loei and Primulinum. Just a really nice one. Just lovely, and I like how they got them staked up so that you can see them really nicely. And last but not least, one of the plants that got me really excited is this Angraecum. This is an Angraecum. It's Memorial, what is it? Memorial Mark Aldridge is the name of the hybrid, and it has two spikes on it. And I've been watching these for the past couple weeks. The flowers will be very large and very fragrant in the evenings. And I've never really had the opportunity to watch an Angraecum bloom like this, so that is going to be really exciting. Stay tuned for that one. If you're interested in adding some interesting orchids to your collection, might I suggest some of the plants that are here, uh, for sale here at Fantasy Orchids. For example, these um, uh, Fuchs Ocean Spray, Neostylus Fuchs, Fuchs Ocean Spray, as well as the Neostylus Lucineri Bluebird. These are both beautiful little vandacious type orchids with very fragrant flowers. And they put out multiple spikes. This one's got two coming out and uh, they are just lovely and they are called bluebird for a reason they do have a very lovely light blue tone to them next door they have lots of tolumnias over here tolumnias are these sun loving oncidium relatives that um, grow in the caribbean islands and they have very very lovely flowers and then there are plenty and plenty of Vandas here at Fantasy Orchids too. I'm not sure. I think that the owner is kind of partial to them. Um, and why wouldn't he be? They're beautiful. So there's lots. And if you look here at this tag, well, what does that say? Vanda Pachara Delight. Hmm. Does that remind you of anything? If you've seen my channel in the past, you would know that Pachara Delight is the big, massive orchid uh, Vanda that I have and had to leave it home when I moved out here to Colorado, but um, it's still doing well and uh, That's uh, just one of the many wonderful varieties of Vanda that they have here So if you're interested in expanding your Vanda collection might I suggest Getting in touch with fantasy orchids. They'd be happy to hook you up
All right, well, here's a specimen of Bobophila medusae that is actually uh, belongs to another grower. But um, I just wanted to have a look at it, guys, and uh, talk a little bit about what I think this grower could do to have a ro more robust, healthier plant. You can see it's mounted on a piece of, I guess it's cork, and it does have several growths, but the leaves are quite small. Now it's receiving the same amount of light that my plant is, so light's not an issue. So what do you think the issue is? Well, there's a clue right there. Look at that pseudobulb. See how shriveled up it is? Look at this one over here. Also shriveled up. I think this plant needs more water. I think if you're going to mount a bulbophyllum, get prepared to water it twice a day, every day. It, they really, really, really need to stay wet. They really need to stay moist. And um, I just don't think that this plant is getting enough moisture. I think that if it did, it would be much bigger, much happier, and there would be more blooms on it. But that's just my opinion, of course. Well guys, that's about it for Migraine Pets today. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. And I will do my best to update regularly every weekend if I can get over here. And I look forward to sharing my collection with you as well as anything interesting happening here at Fantasy Orchids. So until next time, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you later right here on My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Bye guys.